fun. It's not the only reason that people play games, but usually, when a player picks up a 3D platformer, they're looking for a good time. SpongeBob is also a pretty fun character. After all, he has an entire song about the nature of fun. When Heavy Iron Studio set out to make the SpongeBob movie game, they tried to imbue that game with the same sense of fun that existed in the show and their previous game, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Sponges. Everyone's seen them, everyone's loved them, everyone's used them. But really, have you ever come to think about how they stack up against some of their common competitors? I mean, look at this. It's just a piece of, what is this, like rubber? What is this green thing on the back? I mean, I don't even know what these things are made of, but everybody's had one. Everybody has two or three or twelve in their homes and living spaces. And, you know, have you ever stopped to think, like, has anybody ever, you know, tried to inform you on making a purchasing decision about these? We're just buying all these stupid sponges, and we don't even know why. You know, nobody's being the voice of reason saying, hey, yeah, these are a good purchase, or no, these aren't a good purchase. So that's what I'm coming here to do today. My goal uh, that I would like to accomplish is to inform you for once in your freaking life about these sponges and give a proper sponge review. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to what is the most serious piece of video you've ever seen about a sponge. And that's it. Oh, I want to hit it. Hold on. I want to hit you with the... Who makes a game where you have to wait over 30 seconds after death? What Heavy Iron made wasn't fun. It was tedious and frustrating. I mean, how did the Chocolate River get past QA testing? As you can imagine, the same game that thought it was a good idea to force the player to wait after every Chocolate River death is marred with many more problems. One such problem is the sponge. It's just sponges all over the place. Place. Um, but how do you even how do you even review a sponge? I mean, has anyone even tried to do this? I mean, I looked online. There's nothing. It's a really daunting task. Well, fear not, for I have a plan. Today, we'll be taking a look at sponges, some of their common competitors, and seeing how they perform against each other head to head in some of their most common use cases. To start things off, what's the first thing you probably think of doing with a sponge? That's right, washing dishes. The idea is that sponges absorb the soapy water and then you slide it across the dishes repeatedly to spread that cleanliness. Now there are typically two ways to wash dishes, either a quick clean before putting them in the dishwasher or a complete clean, aka they won't be seeing a dishwasher after. This plus a quick dry and they're good. Now here's the problem, in neither of these cases does a sponge perform better than an alternative, the dish brush. See, when it comes to washing the dishes completely, the floppy softness of a sponge isn't enough to get tough, caked on bullshit. If your goal is to wash your dishes entirely by hand with a sponge, then part of that workflow has to include a few hours of soaking beforehand. A sponge on its own isn't enough to handle most tough battles. The green part on the end, if you've got it, might make a difference, but as I've discovered, you can just buy the best part of the sponge separately, so fuck it. A brush, on the other hand, has the advantage of being tough as shit. The rigidity of the bristles generate enough force to annihilate most tough messes, and when push comes to shove, you can always use the sharp plastic edge to cut away that shit. Now, pre-dishwasher cleaning is technically doable with a sponge since most of the work's going to be done by the dishwasher anyways, but I'd argue that the fact that a sponge wears out so much faster than a brush makes it meaningless. That's right, a sponge has no meaning. The thing about a sponge is that 10% of its lifetime is pretty good, the other 90% it's a soggy shitty mess that can barely hold itself together and leaves you with even worse performance. Not to mention that sponges can't do certain things that brushes can, like reach into cups and thermoses and the like which have too narrow openings for your hand to fit in. 
Under almost no circumstances is a sponge better at doing anything than a dish brush. The only thing I can think of rather doing with a sponge than a brush is washing non-stick pans since their coating can be easily scraped off if you're not too careful. I'm personally paranoid about ruining my non-sticks so I use softer cleaning tools on them but other than that, a sponge is a waste of time when it comes to washing dishes. One such problem is the sponge ball, which is often dreaded because of its controls. But why are the sponge ball controls so bad? Today, I want to take some time out of this very informative sponge review to explore why the sponge ball is such a pain to control. Game feel is one of the two essential things that a platformer needs to get right, the other being level design. Put simply, game feel describes the kinesthetic experience of controlling a game. When people describe controls as twitchy, responsive, or loose, they are describing game feel. There is no one correct game feel, but this doesn't mean that any control scheme will feel good for any particular game. Ideally, a control scheme should be designed with the game's mechanics and level design in mind for the best experience. The Sponge Ball is a pretty unconventional moveset for a platforming game. In his book, Game Feel, Steve Swink outlines a method for visualizing a control scheme. Any movement can be broken down into three parts. The attack, sustain, and release. The attack phase describes the period where the player character is accelerating towards their top speed. The sustain phase describes the maximum speed of the character. And the release describes the amount of time it takes for that character to come to a stop. The sponge ball has a fairly long attack and release phase, meaning that its controls are going to feel pretty loose. This doesn't immediately make the controls bad. The 2D Sonic games feature a pretty similar acceleration curve, and those games prove that this style of control can be put to good use. So what do the Sonic games get right that SpongeBob doesn't? Well, I would argue that Sonic has designed its challenges with its controls in mind. A Sonic level is designed so that with skillful play, you can maintain your momentum and achieve exhilarating breakneck speeds. Going fast in a Sonic game feels amazing, and it's quite the spectacle to behold. Another common use of sponges is to wash surfaces. Again, the idea is that a sponge's unique absorbent properties will soak up some cleaning product and allow you to spread it around to wipe up a mess. The issue though is that I think its absorbency is its greatest weakness here. When I think of positive uses of absorbency, I think of things like dipping bread into olive oil and vinegar and letting it soak it all up and then eating the bread. Bread is good for this because it fills up, it absorbs the fluids it's dipped in, and so it transfers them to my mouth in a nice little flavorful package. Sponges work much the same way, but the difference is that I'm not trying to eat this, I'm trying to clean it up. A sponge's absorbency allows it to absorb cleaning product, yes, but also the mess itself. Past a certain point, the sponge is just spreading around the mess as it lacks enough surface area to cover the whole thing. A sponge doesn't clean a mess, it just turns it into a different kind of mess. An alternative though, a cloth, does have the surface area necessary to practically wrap up and lift away a mess. It's like draping a tent over dirt and, and shipping it away. The cloth's added surface area also allows you to target the mess with specific parts of the cloth that have not yet come into contact with it, meaning it reduces the amount of your effort which is just spreading the dirt. Then when most of it is cleaned, a second cloth can be used to dry up. A sponge on the other hand, oof. Dirt enters so deeply into it that I don't think you can ever be completely confident that it's totally clean. And since a cleaning product needs to be used anyways, cleaning a surface mess with a sponge, even once, now disqualifies it from ever being a dishwashing sponge ever again. This, this sponge is like really lumpy, like I know it's like the joke is like the sponges are awful for the video, but like this sponge is so freaking cheap, it's like it's got like a lump in it. It's supposed strength, absorbency works against it. It easily becomes contaminated with toxic substances you wouldn't want to eat off. When it comes to washing surfaces, a sponge has no place against a couple of cloths. The sponge ball levels couldn't be further away from this. None of the sponge bob levels really take advantage of their momentum-based movement system, and their design forces the player to a grinding halt. As Lamhoot pointed out, this level requires you to sit and wait for the platform to spin around. 
Not even speedrunners can go fast enough to avoid waiting. This kills all of the player's momentum, and it makes the player feel bored and frustrated. This isn't even the worst example of an obstacle that brings the gameplay to a halt. An earlier level features these rising blocks. No matter how fast the player is going, they will be forced to stop at least once, but probably multiple times. Further compounding this stop and start gameplay, there is nothing pushing the player to go as fast as possible. The player isn't timed and they won't get anything special for going quickly. Compare this to Sonic, where the player can only access secrets and more interesting routes by proving their skill and going fast. In other words, Sonic more effectively weaves the sensation of going fast into its gameplay. The sponge ball gives the player no reason to rush, and every reason to hold back. While some of the sponge ball obstacles bring the player to a halt, the rest of them are just boring. Does this bumpy section really add anything to the game? It isn't challenging, and the player can overcome it without the fear of death. The only thing this section does is increase the tedium of death, since it will lengthen each attempt by a couple of seconds. This might sound really nitpicky, but washing a toilet is something you might think of doing with a sponge, but spoiler alert, a brush is gonna win again. Plain and simple, nobody wants to get their hands so close to the kind of dirt what's in a toilet. Also, for the reason stated already, a sponge used once on a toilet is basically garbage immediately after, it's a total waste, and it's disgusting to try to use. A toilet brush, on the other hand, puts some space between you and your opponent and can be used multiple times without issue as its bristles don't hold on to the messes they clean in the same way that a sponge does. It lets you reach around tough to reach spots and overall does a better job dislodging dirt and pushing it back into the toilet water for a final flush to clean it out. So, so far as we've seen, the best part about sponges is that you can throw them out. Sponges aren't better than their alternatives at cleaning toilets, at washing dishes, or at wiping down surfaces. Is there anything they might be good at? There's something in the sponge. I swear to God, there's something inside of it. It's not me, it's like... How do you even get a flash drive in a sponge like that? Oh, look! Sponge! I gotta... I gotta check that out. So what we got here is a state-of-the-art sponge. Now, as you can see, very porous. And ooh, ooh, that roughness really gets out the, the, the dingity dirgities. <gasps> so let's get in here. All right, so, oh my god, what a pristine looking toilet. I mean, this, you know, this is a prop toilet. You know, we're not actually trying to, to clean, but, you know, it, it, <sighs> <laughs> Anyway, um, look at all that. Look at all that dirt and grime. Let's get it. <laughs> Oops, got some. Rub <laughs> the dirt in there. You know what I mean? You got it. You got it. You gotta use some elbow grease. Mm -mm. Toasty. I know what they've been saying. Don't tell. Me. Don't. Maybe there's some ludonarrative dissonance with what's happening here. 
all right? These bricks, these, these human bricks made from, from man's, man's disgusting, dirty nature. You know, there's probably one in the factory, all right? That's the dirt of our sins, okay? Subscribe. Another use of sponges is uh, to take baths. If you ever heard of a sponge bath, that's when you use a sponge to take a bath, and I'm gonna explain to you why it's full of shit. But this wasted level space is rare in good platforming gauntlets, because it doesn't really add anything to the gameplay. As I said earlier, there is theoretically a set of levels that could make the sponge ball feel good. Perhaps if the sponge ball levels were more like the flowing fast slide levels, the sponge ball would feel great. As weird as it may sound, Sanic Ball might be the perfect template for a sponge ball level. After all, it gives the player incentives to go fast, and it perfectly accommodates the moveset that the sponge ball was going for. Thus, proving that the sponge ball is just a really bad set of bad Sonic levels. Another reason why the sponge ball doesn't feel satisfying to control is that the movie game doesn't give it many polish effects. Polish effects are elements that impact game feel, but they aren't factored into the simulation. The movie game doesn't do a lot to sell the speed of the sponge ball. The only polish the game provides are these bubbles, but they do more to sell the fact that you're underwater than they do to sell the fact that you're going quickly. If you run into a wall, the game doesn't do much to acknowledge the speed of that impact. There's no particle effect or sound effect or anything. In fact, the only thing that happens is that the camera might whip around, which is more disorienting than it is impactful. Looking to other games, we can see how pathetic the SpongeBall really is. A collision in Sonic feels really weighty. All of the player's rings fly everywhere, Sonic plays a special damage animation, and there's a weighty sound effect. Just compare these two collisions back to back, and you'll see what I mean. All of these failures combine to make the sponge ball feel awful to control. I could go on about the failures of the SpongeBob movie game. The game as a whole has some game feel problems as well but I don't have time to break down every little failure that this game makes, and frankly, at this point, I would just be beating a dead seahorse. This game is awful on so many levels. It's an insult to gaming, and frankly, I have no idea why it shares a spot with Gex 2 on Lamhoot's ordinal scale. Anyway, you've heard enough of my ranting, 
So I'll just roll out and let you guys get back to an actual sponge review. Washing yourself. Sponges can be used to wash yourself, such as in the classic the sponge bath. Here we have a bath. Big bath for a big boy. I'm hungry. Hungry for a cleaning. I'm just gonna fucking get in the tub. I set this video going in, going. There's two things I wanna do. I want to rip apart a sponge and I want to take a bath in my clothes. And now when it's when it's finally come to that moment, you know, to give you, you know, a hands-on, you know, review, you know, as I'm experiencing it, here I am getting cold feet. Well, my feet are definitely gonna get cold when they in that water. I don't know what the temperature of that is. Oh, Jesus Christ. So here we are in a bath. So here's the here's the thing about I don't have my phone. Okay. Here's the thing about baths in general, forget the sponge right now. The thing about baths, you know, as far as like cleaning yourself goes, they don't actually do a very good job of doing that. They just kind of, whatever filth you have on your body goes into the water, yes, and it gets removed from you, but then as you spread the water around and you wash yourself and, you know, do whatever the heck you do in a bath, you just spread around the dirt. I mean, simulate it for you. So this instant coffee throughout this video has been my simulation of, oh, freaking god dang it. Oh god, it smells so bad. Oh, it smells like what I imagined battery acid smells like. <sighs> oh, it's in my eyes. So as I was saying before about baths, the thing about baths that you, you know you have problems with is all this filth, right? All this garbage, freaking stuff. You you transfer it to the water, but then as you you spread it around, you're just you're kind of you're not actually cleaning yourself and removing any guck, but you're just evenly distributing your own filth, right? You know, so a bath already is not really like a very effective way to clean yourself. So then when someone suggests, well, why don't you use a tool to do more effectively something that is already not good? That's stupid. Like, why would I take this sponge, stick it in this filth, let it suck up all this guck, and then... <laughs> I breathe some of that. <laughs> Why would you... Why would you subject yourself to this garbage? I'm just spreading my filth all around my naked... Imagine I'm naked. I don't. But imagine my naked body. But really don't. But just imagine you're just... You're filthy and you're moving your filth somewhere else and then just to pick it up and go... This is disgusting. Ugh. Oh. But here's the thing, right? Like, I'm not gonna lie. I don't feel clean at all. In fact, uh, I feel absolutely filthy, right? Just like taking this filth. You know, I'm just taking this garbage and just rubbing it all over myself like a filthy freaking animal you know it's it's absolutely disgusting like cleanliness wise like if i had to rate it as like something some way to get yourself clean i'm not any cleaner than when i first got in here i'm exactly as dirty as i was like i said i just evenly distributed that filth but what i won't lie about is that it feels really good right that's the thing that most people don't understand about baths it's not really, it's not a good way to clean yourself, but it's a great way to feel good. It's a great way, it's like, it's like, there's something about, you know, just being soaking wet. It just, uh, it just feels like, I really, you know, I just want to, oh my god, my pants are so heavy, I can't even lift my leg. You know, there's something about this that feels so good. It's like being back in your mother's womb. I know those were my best days, but oh, I really want to like, look at this. Look at this. This is why they called me Chewbacca in gym class in high school. It's, it's not a very effective way. Like even when there is cleaning products, soap, 
It's just the soap is there, yeah, but it's just it's just a facade on top of this dirt garbage, right? Look how look how brown this sponge has become. Look at how filthy the water is that pours out of it. You can see that it's yellow, right? Like look. Bear with me now. The sponge is doing its job. Okay. Look at this. It's filthy disgusting. Imagine this is you. Are you lucky that I'm here to inform a purchasing decision for you? I get to go through all these hardships so you don't have to. Ooh. So like I said, it, like it feels good, right? But definitely not anything I would seriously recommend if you're really in the market to get yourself clean. I believe that there's a there's a tier list of of ways to clean yourself, right? And you know what? That goes right into it. Because here's the thing about taking a bath. We well, let's get let's get to the point. Let's get it over with. Taking a bath. Taking a sponge bath is a waste of time. It's not a good way to get yourself clean. And once again, we find common theme to this whole video, a better alternative exists. And you know what it is? It's, it's something you have to do after you take a bath. Anyways, if you actually want to feel clean, here's the reveal that I don't actually own a, a uh, shower drain. I had to jerry-rig up this freaking... It's a cloth in a plastic bag with duct tape. Garbage. You know, you know the best part about the sponge? Honestly, the only selling point? I get it, you know what? Some people think it's cheap. Some people think it's not very expensive. You can get a sponge for just about as much as you can get a brush. For real, three bucks each. The best part though, as I was saying about a sponge, is that once you're done with it, once you realize that it is trash, Chuck it. Tier list, tier list of ways to get yourself clean. You gotta do this after you've taken a bath anyways, if you actually want to get yourself clean. Here's the tier list. Oh, I forgot this was gonna be a gag in the shower. I was gonna take a swig of this. Mmm. That's a big mess. Let me take one of these extra sponges sitting off stage to just <laughs> <sighs> Bottoms up. I'm just covered now. Hey, have a good drink. It's how I love to wash my hair with my favorite clean product. Oh my god, it's so cold. Huh? Oh my god, it's stained the back of my neck. Washing yourself, something humans have always had to do in their lives. Top tier number one, taking a shower. Oh my god, it's kind of cold. This is oh, this is you <laughs> see after you take a bath, you're still dirty, right? The thing about the bath evenly distributing all your filth. Okay, it's true that it does that, but here's how the shower gets there on the top tier. So typically, the way you you would apply a shower to yourself is you would take it and stick it up in one of these, right, in your shower head. And now something you'll notice, you notice that the water is pouring downwards, right? So the way it works is any filth I have on the top of my head, like, I don't know, beer, the water will soak it up and then go downwards. Instead of traversing all around and just evenly distributing my junk, my garbage, the water takes the filth and pushes it down and spreads it downwards across my body until it gets all the way down to the bottom and it goes out the drain. And you can see how this works. I'm actually getting the coffee, but if you use soap, right, you can just, oh, this looks so gross. If you, you put soap all over yourself, look, and then you take this and you can, and so see how the, I can't see, but the water just takes all of this and pushes it down. Look at all the stuff coming off of me. Look at that. Do you see this? Look at that, sir. And that's why a shower is top tier. Top, top 
tier of ways to clean yourself. Now, second on the clean yourself tier list, you think it's a sponge bath? You think it's a bath of any kind? Absolutely not. Second on the tier list of ways to clean yourself is this bad boy right here. This is a sink, okay? And check this out. So here's the thing about a sink, right? You, you take your hands, you put soap on them, and you wash them. And even if you're completely dirty, at least you can safely say that after you've washed your hands, your hands are clean. Unlike a bath, where after you've taken a bath, you can't make any sort of statements about the cleanliness. You can't say any part of you is clean or not because you've just spread your freaking filth. I keep just saying the same things over and over. It's just dirt just all over. But at least when you wash your hands, you know for a fact, guaranteed, your hands are clean. After washing your hands, that's where you get things like baths and sponge baths, honestly, that I put even below. Because like I said, why would you want to do something that's already bad? better, you know? After that, as you get to real trash stuff, like, like, you know, low tier cleaning yourself ways, like just spraying yourself with Febreze, you know, like, if you ever had a hard time, you know what I'm talking about. So that's it, you know, at this point we've covered all the main use cases of sponges. You can wash your dishes with them. You can wash your surfaces with them. You can wash your toilet with them. You can wash yourself with them. And what we've seen in every single one of these situations is that a better alternative exists and a better alternative at just about the same price. We're not talking a premium alternative. It's the same thing. It's competing with something at the same price that's better than it in every single way. There's really, honestly, no reason for these things to exist. I mean, the best part of these things is this stupid green part, and as we know, you can just buy that thing on its own. There's, not, there's nothing to this yellow bit. It serves no purpose. There's nothing it does that nothing else does. The only thing this thing does is it cleans your non-sticks. That's it. That's the only thing that I can... Oh, this is a real review. I'm being f totally fucking for real right now. I am reviewing a goddamn sponge. Honest to God, the only thing I can think of that this can do that nothing else in your house can do better is clean your non-sticks. That's it. Everything else it does crap. Everything else it spreads dirt around. It just, it's a, it's a, it's a stupid product. It's outdated. We have things that are better. Brushes do everything better than these stupid things. And why would you do, I mean, okay, let's find out thing was stupid. I'm soaking wet now. This has been, this has been mostly a joke, but it turns out actually, you know, a kind of somewhat genuine review of sponges. This has been the the sponge review. I'm soaking wet now. I'm going to take my clothes off. That's where the camera has to no longer be on. Thank you for watching.